Hey, this is Pastor Kevin. Happy Saturday. This is Saturday, April 17th, 2021. Hope you're having a great day, a great Saturday, a great whatever day. I want to share with you a brief message today that is important to my heart, and I want to speak to your heart right now and your life. I want to share something from the Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 6. Now, I have to confess and be very open and disclosive with you, my dear subscribers. I don't read the Old Testament books very often. I don't read Judges or Joshua or First or Second Samuel as often as I should. So I'm being very open and, and disclosive. I would never lie to you or exaggerate anything. But there is a story in Judges chapter 6 about a man named Gideon. Perhaps you're familiar with Gideon. Gideon in the Bible was not as well known as other Bible heroes. He's not as popular as Moses or King David or King Solomon. Gideon was not a king or a prophet or a warrior or any kind of important person. He, he held no important position or title in Israel. But his story is very interesting in Judges chapter 6 and 7. At that time, Israel did what was evil in God's sight. So God allowed the foreign Midianites to come in and really steal from Israel, attack their land, and take their livestock. And Israel was reduced to starvation at that time. And they cried out to God. And what did God do? Instead of God speaking to the then king of Israel, or the prophet, or a priest, God spoke to a man named Gideon. And again, he is not a well-known Bible hero. You ask anybody, who is Jesus? Who is Moses? Who is King David? And a lot of people who are not even Christians will recognize those names and who they are. Most people don't know Gideon. When God spoke to Gideon, God said, well, actually it was an angel. The angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon in Judges chapter 6, verse 12. And the angel said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That surprised Gideon. And he was like, well, if God is with us, Pardon me, but why has God allowed all this calamity and problems and thievery to happen? We're starving. Of course, Gideon knew why God allowed the Midianites to attack them. But the Lord spoke to Gideon in verse 14. It says that the Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. Gideon said, pardon me, my Lord, and this is a direct quote. I wouldn't lie or exaggerate. He said, but how can I save Israel, the entire nation? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. At that point, God didn't say, yeah, you are pretty p pathetic. Goodbye. You know, like the, the weakest link reality show. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. You now, God knew all about Gideon. God knew that Gideon was a little, frightened, nervous, insecure guy. God knew that Gideon had no position. God knew that Gideon had no prior military service um, experience. That Gideon was not a king or a or a warrior, or a warrior in training, or anything important. So God simply said in verse 16, I will be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites. In the next chapter, Midian agrees to go out and fight this battle with thousands and thousands and thousands of Israelite warriors, and God shrinks down his army. God says, you have too many. So 20,000 soldiers in the army of Israel became 10,000. 10,000 became an army of 300. 
Long story short, God shrank Gideon's army down from 20,000 to 300. And God said, that's enough. You have enough. If you had 20,000 Israelite soldiers and you defeat the Midianites, then you would take credit for it. You'd say, we're so great, we did this. But God wanted for him, God, Yahweh, to get the credit and the glory. <coughs> Pardon me. So God allowed Midian, a man, again, with no prior military experience, to go and lead an army of 300 against the Midianites. And by the grace of God, Gideon and the army of Israel of 300 conquered the Midianites. And the Midianites left Israel alone and stopped plundering their goods and taking their livestock. The point is that God believed in Gideon even when Gideon did not believe in himself. God called Gideon a mighty warrior, even though Gideon said that, that his tribe was the weakest of the 12 tribes of Israel and that he, Gideon, was the least in his family. Sometimes God calls the least. Sometimes God calls those who don't feel qualified, who don't feel secure all the time. God calls those of us, and I'm one of them, those of us who don't always feel confident, those of us who don't always feel full of faith, faithful. God calls us and loves us and draws us to us, and he uses us for his service when we're not all that educated or we can't quote Bible verses chapter and verse, or even though we have failed some faith tests. I have passed some faith tests. I have flunked many more faith tests. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you have days where you feel like that you're not enough, that you're not doing enough, that your back hurts or your hip hurts or your neck is stiff or you don't hear like you used to, or, or your eyes don't work like they used to. Maybe you feel like you get depressed easily, or you get stressed out easily, or you go to fear and anxiety real quick when things begin to go wrong in your life. Perhaps you don't think of yourself as some bright, shining example of Christianity. You know what? To God, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Your Heavenly Father is impressed with you, even when you're not impressed with yourself. God called Gideon mighty warrior when he was anything but mighty or a warrior. Jesus thought of Peter as a rock way before he had a rock salad relationship with Jesus. Peter was the one who denied him three times. Jesus saw in Peter potential that Peter did not see in himself. God saw potential in Gideon when Gideon could not see it in himself. Does that make sense? And I believe that God sees so much more in you than you see in yourself. I know that God believes in you much more than you believe in yourself. God believes in me much more than I believe in myself. I'm a pastor of 22 years. In high school, I had a speech impediment, like Moses. And sometimes I still mumble. Sometimes I still stumble over my words. You can tell in my videos on this channel. Sometimes I st stutter and I say syllables in, in that repetitive way that you know people who stutter do. So I am not eloquent. I am not a great orator. And yet God has blessed me with an awesome ministry of 22 years. 
And so far, I'm speaking into you right now, and most of my words are intelligible. God is not looking down at you or scowling at you or scolding you because you're not always full of faith. You're not always full of confidence. Even if you're prone to worry and anxiety, even if you get stressed out easily, even if you think your, your life isn't all that great, even if you feel like what you do isn't all that important, today I want you to know that Gideon was more important than he realized, and you are more important than you realize. There are people who look forward to seeing you and enjoy your company. Your best friend would be lost without you. Your spouse would be lost without you. And perhaps your spouse is your best friend. Your children need you. Your friends need you and appreciate you. Your grandchildren, if you had them, need you. See, you are a blessing more than you realize. You make an impression upon people more than you realize. Gideon saw himself as a weak, insecure little man, the, the least in his own family, and God said no. God said, you're a mighty warrior. And I'm telling you right now, you are a mighty warrior. Perhaps your mom and dad didn't love you like they should have. Perhaps your parents right now don't love you like they should love you. Maybe your boss is a jerk. Maybe your coworkers are negative. Maybe you're a student at school and other kids in school are negative and always cussing and creating a toxic environment. None of that defines who you are. God looks at you. He sees your personality. He knows your heart. He sees potential in you that you don't see in yourself. And I'm saying that from my own life. God took me as a follower. I was a follower in school. I didn't do anything great in high school. I didn't try out for football. I wasn't popular. When I became a Christian, then I got involved in drama and theater and acting. Then I began to speak publicly. My pastor gave me a chance to speak in church. I didn't do a great job. He saw potential in me I didn't see in myself. I got better at speaking as time went on. And I got married and I have two awesome kids. And God has helped me to, to bring out of me what he saw in me all along. So this story of Gideon just underscores God's character. God called Moses, Moses, a man who, who couldn't speak very well. He was very insecure regarding his speaking abilities. And he killed a man. He killed an Egyptian. But God didn't say, yeah, you're right. You suck. Goodbye. He said, no, Moses, you're the one. And Moses argued. Moses argued with God. And God said, hey, who made men's mouths? Who made people to, to walk and talk and live life? Wasn't it I? <clears throat> now go with Aaron. Moses was not qualified. Abraham had serious moral problems, moral deficiencies. Gideon, again, was a guy who de defined himself as the least in his family. Simon, who became Peter, was a fisherman who was prone to being overly emotional, very passionate, but he would be passionate for Jesus and then passionately say, I don't know him. I don't know him. And yet Jesus saw in Peter the rock that he could be. He became the rock. He spoke up in Acts 2. He spoke to a crowd of thousands without his voice faltering. He spoke a bold message on Pentecost Day in Acts chapter 2. God sees your potential. There is so much in you. People need you. You are special. You're a wonderful person. God knows your heart. God calls you mighty. God calls you a warrior. You are a mighty warrior because you have endured problems 
that the rest of us have not. Right? I bet you have. You have put up with problem people in your family, in your workplace that I haven't. You have overcome challenges, health problems that the rest of us have not had to deal with. That's what makes you who you are. Not what your mom and dad say or don't say about you. Not what your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend thought about you. Nobody else gets to define who you are. Nobody else gets to put you on the track of your life, your life journey. You, only you. So see yourself as God sees you. Accept God's amazing, astounding opinion of you. When you get down on yourself and you feel like you're not enough or you're not doing enough, you're not praying enough, remember, God already sees you as righteous and holy in God's sight because of your faith in Jesus. His blood makes you accepted, justified, made right with God. And beyond salvation, he sees you as a mighty warrior. So just like God told Gideon, just go in the strength you have. This is Judges chapter 6, verse 14. He said, go in the strength you have, and I will be with you. That is on my heart right now to say to your heart. This is what I think is on God's heart to speak to your heart right now. I think God is saying to you right now, and there is somebody watching this who needs to get this and hear this. God is speaking to somebody, probably you, and God is saying to you, go and live your life in the strength that you already have. You already have it. Ephesians 1 verse 3. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Strength, hope, joy, courage, love, peace, every spiritual blessing you can name, you already have it, according to Ephesians 1, verse 3. So go in the strength you have. Go in the intelligence that you already have. Go with the heart you already have. Live your life. Go to work. Be a mother. Be a father. You're not deficient. Nothing's wrong with you. You're not lacking. Sure, you have room to grow. We all do. But go in the strength and the intelligence and the abilities and the potential that you have. And the Lord is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video, please like and feel free to comment down below in the comment section. I love my subscribers. I love you very much and I love to hear from you. God bless.